So, just had my first flight with the, um, with the Blade 350QX um, and my little brushless gimbal attached to it for the GoPro. Um, so, I'm just going to explain a little bit about how I uh, fitted it because I found uh, that on some of the forums and stuff, people posted videos that show it fitted but don't really talk about how they actually attach the wires and all that sort of stuff so um, so I might go into that a little bit uh, so basically I've opted to connect the gimbal itself um, along the centre plate of the blade there's like a little bit that raises up from the bottom or raises down um, so I've just literally screwed a couple of holes in there got some small bolts um, it's probably not ideal the way to do it I literally didn't I didn't take the copter apart I just jammed my finger in while I was screwing the bolts up just to uh, stop them from turning uh, so it's probably not the best fix it probably needs to be redone at some point in the future but to be honest I couldn't be bothered to spend the time um, doing it properly today I just wanted to test it and see if it all worked um, so that's how I mounted that. Now I left the original plate, uh, which mounts the GoPro, actually on the um, on the blade. Uh, the reason I've done that is because I've decided what I'm going to try and do is, uh, if I want to mount the GoPro onto here, maybe to take photos without uh, without the gimbal on, I can pull the gimbal off uh, off the rubber bits, and then what I'm going to do is. Uh, mount a GoPro um, sticker pad on there and then that means I can literally just slide in my GoPro um, attachments literally I'm not gonna I'm not gonna do it properly here I haven't attached it yet but literally just poke it in it will flick on there the GoPros I can angle it to whatever angle I want and then um, I'll do it it's there um, and then obviously when I want to take it off, I just literally unhook that, that stays on. Uh, but the amount of weight on that isn't too much, so I think it should be okay. Uh, the only problem I will have is if the uh, sticker comes off at some point. Um, but maybe that's something I've got to look at uh, if it looks like it's going to be a problem. But that's my easy, quick way of swapping between the gimbal and the, uh, and the normal GoPro mount. Um, so as far as wiring up the uh, the gimbal, my uh, this particular gimbal comes with uh, a little wire, uh, and which obviously powers it. However, there was no real instructions on to how you could do anything. So I ended up having to buy this small little adapter uh, from Maplins. Um, I don't know if it's the right thing for the job, but it seems to do the trick. Um, I, I literally push the connectors into this little thing here, um, and then when I put the battery in, uh, if I can find the battery, I've got one here at the moment. The battery connectors will then the battery connector basically goes in there. Now, the one problem I did have is when I first connected it up, I connected the red to the red and the black to the first black. And uh, I got a light come on on the gimbal, but nothing actually happened. It wasn't doing what it was supposed to do. Um, so I decided to try and uh, maybe I've got the wires, maybe the wires were wired up wrong. So I swapped them over <laughs> and suddenly a load of smoke started coming out of it. Um, so I soon realised that actually I shouldn't do that, unplugged it and then proceeded to try the, the, left the red where it was and try the black in the other sockets. So as soon as I moved the black one to the next socket along, suddenly the gimbal came alive, it started working, it started stabilising. So although they don't tell you this, uh, on this particular connector it needs to be, um, it needs to be a bit further up. 
on that. Basically, it's on this thing. There's four wires that come out of there, and obviously, you don't really know what they do. Uh, I assumed that the red one was um, was the positive, um, but it's you know there's no indication of what the other ones do. So it was it becomes a little bit of trial and error. But like I say, um, it actually did seem to work in the end. Um, so what I did then was with the wire that came with the gimbal, this this wire, I drilled a hole in the bottom of the, the blade um, and then just push the wires through so that this sits in here and then tie wrapped it to the one leg so it's there and then all I need to do when I come in to fly the thing and, and actually this is the last thing that I do once I've got the copter powered and um, once I've set it up with the remote control so that it's talking to each other before I turn the blades on I'll go and turn the GoPro on and then plug these in um, and then literally go back and start flying. Um, so I've had my first flight, it was it seemed okay. Um, the other thing actually, what I found, I sort of tested the gimbal by hand at first and I found that it was, it's obviously levelling itself so the GoPro points straight out. Now that becomes a problem if you've got wide angle on the GoPro. Um, and the blades start coming into shot. So as it tilts forward, this is this mechanism is trying to compensate for itself and keep it level. So consequently, you're going to see your blades in shot. So what I did was um, a friend on the a guy on the forum suggested that I um, just wedge something under the sensor just to angle it slightly. So I've, I've wedged a couple of little bits of wood under there, and then just put a tie wrap on just to make sure it doesn't fall off. Um, and that did seem to work. It's it's managed to angle the uh, the GoPro down to a point where I can't see the blades unless you really extremely sort of bank it. So that should be um, that should be okay. I mean, it, it's something that you may have to tweak yourselves. Just experiment with it and see and see what you're happy with. Uh, the the other thing was when I flew it, I didn't use the GoPro on super wide angle. I basically um, stuck it into medium mode so that it's not too wide because um, I think if you've got if you've got it on super wide you're going to end up seeing the skids and you're going to end up seeing the blades whatever you do so um, so with this particular piece of footage I sort of narrowed it not to the narrow setting but to the medium setting um, and it seems to be okay um, so let's have a little look at the footage So first of all, um, just out of interest, I'm going to show you a piece of footage that I did before I fitted the gimbal um, using the original GoPro mount uh, that comes with the blade. Um, and uh, for your excitement, there's a little crash at the end as well. It was my first flight and uh, I uh, didn't realise that you're supposed to mask the uh, didn't realise you're supposed to mask the actual copter itself from the GoPro with uh, foil so that the signals don't get mixed up or um, I'm not sure what exactly causes it but obviously it does interfere. Um, so yeah at the end of this I, I lose control slightly um, so that's interesting but the other thing that you need to look for is the stability of it, uh, the, the shake or the wobble that comes directly from the uh, you know the copter itself transmitting through the mounting. Um, so hopefully when you look at the other piece of footage with the gimbal on, you might notice some sort of difference, but that's up for you guys to decide. Of. And the reason I'm sticking this in there is just for reference. Okay, so that was uh, that was amusing. Um, luckily, I, I didn't do too much damage. The GoPro fell off, but it was fine. Um, I cracked a couple of little bits in the uh, in the in the in the blade itself, but 
it seems to be okay still, it's still flying. So uh, onwards and upwards, as they say. And uh, this is now the flight with the gimbal attached. Um, and hopefully you'll see a little bit of an improvement. I think that it's it's a bit you know obviously keeps it, it does its job in keeping it level and it obviously um, from what I can see it seems to dampen the the vibration from the blades a little bit better than the than the uh, the one that comes with the original blade does so yeah the uh, interesting uh, the flight time seems to be cut down quite a lot the flight time. I don't know, I mean, without, without all gubbins on, without this, the blade on its own seems to fly for about 10 to 12 minutes. Um, with the old GoPro fitting on that came with the blade, seems to cut that down to uh, maybe about 6 minutes, 7 minutes. Um, this seemed to be about <laughs> 3 and a half minutes. Um, I mean, obviously I could have probably flown a bit longer, and, but I was getting a bit scared about the battery dying, so I didn't really want to push, push my luck too much on the first flight. But, um, uh, the other thing I'm not quite sure about is I didn't use the regular battery that came with it. I used uh, a different one. I'm not 100% sure if it was fully charged or not. Um, so maybe there wasn't as much charge in it. Um, but yeah, hopefully I'll try it soon with, uh, with the other battery, the uh, fully charged one, uh, and see how long it flies for. But I suspect it's, you know, it does add a fair bit of weight to the actual um, quad itself. So. I think yeah, you know, you've got to you're gonna compromise on flight times. Hope you enjoyed it and happy flying.